So the basic chemistry tells us that water and many organic substances are immiscible or they do not mix. Every one of you knows that cell membrane is a lipid bilayer, mainly consisting of phospholipids. The structure of phospholipids is responsible for the basic function of a cell membrane, i.e acting as selective barriers to substances outside. Because the interior of the phospholipid bilayer is occupied by hydrophobic fatty acid chains, these are the hydrophobic fatty acid chains, therefore the membrane is impermeable to water-soluble molecules, including ions and most biological molecules. It is known that most drugs are either weak acids or weak bases. Majority of the drugs pass across the plasma membrane by passive diffusion from a region of higher to lower drug concentration. A lipid soluble or uncharged or unionized drug can pass through the plasma membrane while charged or unionized molecules are unable to permeate through. As we just mentioned, that only the uncharged or neutral molecules are permitted across the cell membrane. Charged substances such as sodium and chloride ions cannot passively diffuse through the plasma membrane, and the cells must provide a channel or a special protein known as channel protein, as shown here. So for the transport of these ions across the cell membrane, there must be a channel protein in the lipid bilayer as highlighted in the figure. I normally say that lipophilicity of a compound is the love of fat, or in other words, it is the fear of water. Lipophilicity is a major determining factor in the pharmacokinetics of a drug in the body or its penetration across the vital membranes and biological barriers because lipophilicity can affect a compound's absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion and toxicity or ADMET properties. Drugs that are predominantly dissolved in water are called hydrophilic and those predominantly dissolved in lipids are called lipophilic. Now the phospholipids are literally fatty chains or lipids attached to glycerol. So fatty acid side chains attached to glycerol which also have a phosphate entity attached. So these are the fatty acid side chains from your organic chemistry CH2 single bond CH2 single bond CH2 ends with a CH3 which is called the terminal carbon in a side chain. Now cell membrane is a bilayer. This is one layer. This is second layer. So two monolayers make a bilayer. Now each monolayer consists of polar heads. These are the polar heads. And fatty acid tails or chains stacked upon one another. Now facing out is the extracellular space or the aqueous environment while inside is the lipid environment. Now the inside environment contains both saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. Greater the number of unsaturated fatty acids i.e. containing double bonds the more the gaps in the bilayer which increases permeability. The cell membrane also contains cholesterol. Let's have a look once again. Polar heads, polar heads, and these are the non-polar tails or non-polar fatty acids, and this constitute a cell membrane. So in a larger frame, a polar head with two non-polar tails, and this is a phospholipid molecule. So polar heads, polar heads, non-polar tails, non-polar tails, 
non-polar tails, non-polar tails, and polar heads, and these are the corresponding polar heads, and this is the inside of the cell. Here you can see the magnified image representing a hydrophilic head, which is the phosphate moiety, with a hydrophilic tail, which is largely responsible for the penetration of highly lipid-soluble substances or lipid-soluble drugs across the cell membrane. Now, as mentioned, the lipid-soluble substances will diffuse through the bilayer more readily via passive diffusion. On the other hand, as already mentioned, that larger and charged molecules will pass through via channel proteins of carrier proteins.